All right, let's talk about code profiling. So code, profi code profiling is a way to um, take a potentially complex piece of code and figure out where it's spending most of its time. This is something we would want to know, for example, if we had a piece of code that was kind of slow and we wanted to speed it up. So maybe you're making a video game and um, the movement is just kind of sluggish, right? It's, it's a little too slow to keep up with real time. And, you know, maybe there's 50,000 lines of code and you're not sure where you should be speeding it up, right? It's really important to know where the CPU is spending most of its time. So there's a version of something called Amdel's Law, which basically says um, the amount of speed up you can get by optimizing part of your code is limited by how much time is being spent in that part of your code. If you have a function that's only being run 1% of the time, you could you know, double, triple, quadruple the speed of that function, and you're never going to get a very big speed up on the overall behavior. If we got the time of that function down to zero, we'd only take 1% off the total time. On the other hand, if there's a function that you're spending 75% of your time in, even a 1% improvement in that execution of that function is going to be noticeable in the overall performance. So profiling helps us understand where a piece of code is spending its time. So let me start with a really simple example. Um, this is just a simple function. Um, it's a main program. It makes 10 calls to a function called sub1. Sub1 makes 50 calls to sub2. Sub2 makes 100 calls to sub3. And sub3 doesn't do anything. So this is just, you know, some code that's, that's making calls to different um, functions. And um, we could look at this and we could figure out where most of the time is being spent. But let's run this through a profiler. So to profile our code automatically, um, we're going to use a dash pg switch. So we're going to say dash pg and then output file simple simple dot c. And then if I run simple, well our code doesn't display anything. It was just making some calls. But when we do that, we're left with a file called gmon.out. So that was just created now and that's, that's the result of running um, our program with profiling turned on. Now, if I look at this file, it's not human readable. It's a bunch of, of binary information, but it's information that can be read by a program called gprof. So you can look at the manual pages on gprof, and um, it's got a number of, of options and switches and so on. Um, but let me show you very basic behavior of this program. So we can say gprofile, um, the name of our executable, and then our um, output file. And it basically produces a, uh, a text file containing information. So um, if we go up to the top of this, um, the first thing we'll see is the flat profile. Well, this is very uninteresting because this program ran so quickly and you know the times are, are listed as zero. But we'll see a more interesting example of this next. But I wanted to use the simple example to understand the second half of the report, the call graph. And each of these reports has detailed explanations below explaining what exactly is going on. But let's just look at the call graph for this simple example. So there's a separate section for each function. And so index 1, that's the function sub 3. And this is telling us that um, sub 3 was called 50,000 times and it was called by sub 2 and sub2 was responsible for all 50,000 calls made to sub3. The second section, index2, is telling us about the sub2 function, and sub2 was called 500 times by sub1, and sub2 made 50,000 calls to sub3. And this third section is for sub1, that's index3, and this is telling us main made a total of 10 calls to sub1, and sub1 made 500 calls to sub2. So each of these sections, there's a line, usually in the middle, but it doesn't have to be, but there's an index number on the left. That's the function being discussed in this section of the report. The lines above it are calling that function, and the lines below it are being called by that function. So this is just, you know, a call graph that shows us who's calling who and how many times. Um, and that combined with
this um, flat profile when these numbers are non-zero can give us a lot of information about um, where our time is being spent. So let me look at a less simple example. So this is called demo and um, this basically has an outer loop that runs a thousand times and inside that loop it calls sub one and then it does uh, another thousand iteration loop and for some number of those iterations it calls sub one and then for each one it calls sub two sub three and then it does another 500 iteration loop calls sub one and makes a certain number of calls to sub two and sub three based on the indices and sub one will sometimes call sub three and sub two sometimes calls sub one and sub three sometimes calls sub two so this is a big spaghetti ball right very hard to look at this and know exactly what functions are being called under what circumstances um, but if we try to run this it's going to take a long time so this is a, a really good um, case for um, some code profiling so I'll do gcc-pg-o demo demo.c and then I'll run this and you can see it's it's you know moving along pretty quickly but it's got to go through this outer loop a thousand times so it just finished one tenth of it so we're definitely going to see some non-zero um, execution times in that flat profile and um, and then we'll see the call tree and hopefully be able to tell where most of our time is being spent all right so we skipped forward in time a little we're just about done with the demo program and there we go and again if we look now we've got a gmon.out which is the profiling code for this execution so we can say gprofile demo gmon.out and we get our report so this time we've got our main sub one two and three we've also got this thing called cycle one so you know we can have recursion uh, directly or indirectly where um, we have a circle right we have a series of functions where one calls another calls another and eventually makes a call back to the first function so it's a cycle so let's go look at the flat profile first of all and in this case um, it's recording execution time in nanoseconds and we can see um, we spent 27 seconds um, in sub one and that accounted for you know a little over 50 percent of the total time of the program um, with 500 million calls and an average of 54 nanoseconds per call. Uh, the next most time consuming function was sub 3 and sub 3 there were 380 million calls a total of 15 seconds and there's cumulative time over here 28 percent of the time. Sub 2 128 million uh, calls and 16% uh, of the total time. And we can see sub two, you know, actually took more nanoseconds per call, but was called, you know, only one quarter as often as sub one. So if we, if we double the speed of this, we're going to gain about 8% on our total execution. Whereas if, if we, um, you know, double the efficiency of sub one, we might see, you know, a pretty significant increase since that's taking half of our time. So um, even though this function is slower, it's not used as often. So we would probably spend our uh, optimizing effort on sub one um, before we'd spend it on sub two. And main, you know, is taking hardly any time, 3% of the time, um, a total of two seconds out of the 53 seconds that the program took to run. Optimizing main doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in that case. And then just to look at the call graph to compare it to um, the previous example, which was pretty straightforward. Um, so here's index one, that's the main program, nothing called main, but main called uh, sub one half a million times, sub three, 375 million times, and sub two, 125 million times. And this number after the slash is the total number of calls that main made to anything. So half of the calls were made to sub one, and you know 37 percent to sub three and so on um, down here on index three index three is sub one and we can see sub one was called by sub two not too many times called by main um, quite a few times and sub one called sub three not a whole lot of times
And so this can start to give us an idea of how how this tree of function calls is broken out. And it looks like there's a lot of calling between main and sub one, and maybe not too much going on after that. So we might look at that particular part of the calling structure and see if there's a way to optimize a system, reduce the number of calls, or something like that. Um, index four is sub three. And we can see that sub three was called by sub one and main those those many times, and it called sub two um, not too many times, about three million times. Index five is sub two, it's called by sub three and main, and it calls sub one. And then up here is cycle one. So cycle one is you know where we have a sequence of things calling each other and eventually calling themselves um, directly or indirectly. Um, and so this is sub one, sub three, sub two. So that's that's just kind of a, a really brief high level overview of the kind of reports we can get out of uh, GProf. And again, you know, there's details down here explaining exactly um, what these different columns mean, um, both when you're above the um, the line with the index in it and when you're below. And it also goes into a little more detail about the cycles um, where you have uh, recursion going on. So um, that's, that's basic profiling. There's a lot of different profiling tools out there, um, but that's the kind of information that we can get out of it. And that, again, can be useful for um, choosing where to spend our efforts in trying to optimize our code.